Hey and welcome to yet another video. So I promised earlier that I make some aerogel and this is actually the first video of the aerogel series. So I want to start with aluminium aerogel and then I proceed to silica aerogel. So the first reagent for alumina aerogel is aluminum isopropoxide. And to make this chemical, I used isopropanol, which was in the beaker with the molecular sieves to dry, and aluminium foil. And as catalyst, I use iodine. So this is just a derivated method from the isopropoxide synthesis from Nile Red, which is quite a cool chemistry channel, so I recommend you to take a look at and to start off, basically, you add all the aluminum foil in a flask, then you add the isopropanol, and finally the iodine. So I use quite a lot of iodine, so I think about 5 grams are necessary for this amount of aluminum. And then everything is reacted under reflux. So I want to set, while I'm starting here, that this took really, really long. So it needed three days to entirely react with most of the aluminum. And it was really a huge pain to do all this work. And as the video title already says, it was a fail. So not the reaction was a fail, it worked. I produced quite a lot of aluminum isopropoxide, but I did not manage to distill it properly and I had some problems with my distilling apparatus. It partially started to melt down, so the plastic and rubber ceiling started to melt down, which was not very obvious, but I already had it in mind that something like this could happen. And so I lost pretty much all of my isopropoxide, which I reacted over the whole week. So this apparatus ran really for over three days, and ended with a failure. So I won't do this method I show in this video here again because it's just too time intensive and I don't have that much time. Because if I want to have this YouTube channel going, I need to be very fast with my experience because otherwise I can upload videos once every two months and that's really problematic. So most of the video I do upload are, they look actually pretty cheap and they are pretty cheap, but the problem is that the more complicated projects I have running currently are stuck. So I need a lot of time and I have a lot of fails. So I decided just to upload the fails as well because they are somehow have somehow an educating effect because you can learn from them that you don't repeat this method. So aerogel.org suggests to use aluminium sacbutoxide, but it's very hard to get your hands on sacbutanol. So I'm using isopropanol, which is pretty easy to access and it should work as well. I've already done some tests and I don't think there's any big difference. So I'm creating aluminium isopropoxide instead of aluminium sacbutoxide. And in the next video, I'm going to show you the other method, which I already worked out and which is much faster. And this will involve the reaction of anhydrous aluminium chloride with isopropanol, which directly results in aluminium isopropoxide and hydrochloric acid, or hydro hydrogen chloride, which partially will dissolve in the isopropanol, but most of it will just evaporate away. And then I'm going to repeat the distillation. So, the next videos will be about making anhydrous aluminium chloride and 
I'm going to do a thermite reaction between copper chloride and aluminium. So the next video I'm going to upload is basically how to make copper to chloride. So you see it's actually a lot of work to get to the point where you can actually start to make an aerogel because the components like aluminium isopropoxide oxide are pretty expensive. They are not available on eBay. So you can get them from chemical suppliers, but it's not easy for a private person to access these chemicals as well as aluminium chloride and hydrous. It's pretty difficult to access and currently I have no option. So I have to do a lot of things at home with domestic chemicals. And this is really a huge pain because it needs so much time and I always do very big quantities because if I ruin the synthesis later, I still have some backup material to do the synthesis again, because otherwise I would end up doing this for years. So here you can actually see the Erlenmeyer flask that is placed on the hot plate and the isopropanol is was a bit orange due to iodine dissolved, but after a bit of boiling and a reflux, as you can see here, it entirely vanished and instead there is this brown fine dispersed aluminum powder, which indicates that the aluminum foil is already dissolving. It's orange again because I added more iodine and you can already see that some of the aluminum foil has some holes. So over the course of three days, it finally degraded and at this stage, it's about half the way. So you have to run this until it looks something like this. And I took it off the hot plate and waited for it to cool. So now the first fail occurred. I thought it might be a good idea to filter this through to get rid of the bigger aluminum pieces that are flying around inside. But actually it turned out to be super stupid because not even a milliliter made it through the filter paper. So I ended up ticking the filter paper with a screwdriver, which resulted just in a loss of material. So this is insanely stupid. And additionally, I freed a lot of isopropoxide vapor. So here's my improvised filter device because all my funnels vanished. I don't know where they go. So one funnel I did threw away after a terrible stank and the other funnels are simply not there anymore. So I improvised using a plastic bottle and I drilled some holes on the bottom and put a coffee filter on top, which is really not a good filtering approach, but I have to deal with the things I have simply. So I was having short lunch in the meantime, and now I'm proceeding with synchronizing this video. So I stopped at the filtering and here you can see the first aluminum isopropoxide vapors. So they are hydrolyzing in air to form aluminum oxide or hydroxide or something like this. And here you see that although I poured in all the Erlenmeyer flask content, nothing makes it through to the beaker. So everything is stuck into the filter paper. And I had to use a screwdriver to puncture it to allow everything to go through. So really this didn't work at all. So don't filter the solution. It really doesn't work. The only way to purify it is distilling it. And at the moment, I think the only proper way to distill it is vacuum distillation. So my distillation apparatus is at the moment not capable of doing vacuum distillation. So I think I have to create a vacuum adapter or something like this to allow this thing to run under vacuum.
So finally, I just poured the content of the speaker back into the earlier Erlmeyer flask for the distillation. So swapping the beaker of flask is absolutely unnecessary and just part of the fail here. As you see, this stuff makes a lot of dirt and it's stinking horrible. So make sure that you have a good ventilation because if this enters your lung, it will still decompose into aluminum oxide powder. And I don't know if this is really good because since it's gaseous, it can go deep into your lung and maybe this is a bit dangerous. So I was wearing a respirator this time. So it really stank that much because it's still hot. So I ran for the respirator and I probably flooded my workplace with toxic fumes. But since I was wearing a respirator, this did not cause any harm to me, supposedly. To clean these things up, I recommend using hydrochloric acid because it reacts with the isopropoxide and the aluminium and the aluminium oxide. So here you see my distillation setup. I have put a thermometer in top and you see that it's room temperature. So there is not any vapor that has made it up yet. And you see most of the vapor that is going upwards is just dripping down. But soon this will heat up and here you can see the first isopropanol that is coming over and there's some white dust and I suppose this to be aluminium isopropoxide vapors. I'm not sure but I suppose it to be. But since the temperature at this time is 82 degrees Celsius, I believe this is isopropanol. And now there's a lot of isopropanol that's coming over. So while this was boiling, I cranked up the temperature to make everything faster. But in the end, this got a disaster. Here it is surviving, but this was not intended. Here you see, I wrapped this with aluminum foil to isolate it. And now, which is the stuff that's coming over is isopropoxide here with more vapor. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.